Hello everybody, I'm again. This video I want to talk about one of those subjects you keep bringing up in the comments every now and then, and that is feature bloat in C Sharp. You see, a while ago I made a video talking about where C Sharp is heading and some of those features, and many of you actually left a comment down below saying that, oh, it's turning more like C++, or now there's so many to do a single thing, which one should I choose? They should remove features if they keep adding features and all that. I want to just take a look in that whole concept and give you my two cents and see where we stand and where we could potentially be also looking at other languages and how they handle their own um, feature backwards compatibility. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's see the most basic claim. And actually, I'm going to put a comment right here so you can see. Um, people just keep comparing it to C++ because C++ actually has quite a few features now after so many years and there's so many ways to do things and because you have to maintain backwards compatibility so you don't actually break old code, you can't really remove features. Now, there are languages that tackle this differently, but I'm going to talk about that in the future. What I want to show you here is let's see um, a very similar thing in C Sharp, right? So the null check. The null check has changed quite a bit over time in C Sharp, and I'm going to show you what I mean in case you're not familiar with it. I actually do have a video dedicated to that if you want to check out, but in here I'm going to summarize a few of the things. So you can do a simple null check. So let's say I have like this object where 10% of the time will be an object and 90% of the time will be null. And then I want to do a null check on this thing. So how would you do it? Well, normally you would do if nick equals null, right? And likewise, if you want to see the opposite of this, then you would say if Nick is not null. Everyone should be familiar with this. Now, come C sharp, well, in, in various forms from, from 8 to 9, pattern matching was added and actually can be used in the same context. So now the proper way to check if something is null is Nick is null. So that's it. This is the official way of doing a null check now. Uh, the reason why this is better than this is because the operator, this operator and this operator on the item itself, on the object, can be overloaded and mutate the behavior. So you can manipulate what this actually returns, while in here it won't. It will just check the actual reference. Now the opposite of this comes in this form. Nick is not null. Very simple. However, you can also say if Nick is this. And this will check that this is not null because it is an object. It has the exact same effect as checking if this is not null. So now you have five different ways of handling null. Really, there's two main ones, but which ones would you stick to, right? And this is just one of those examples. The other thing that has changed over time is the switch keyword. So if I have like an enum like this over here and I want to do a switch and let me just remove that into uh, null checks and delete it. So let's say if I have a random uh, one of those values in that enum and I want to do a switch on that enum, I simply do switch on the enum and then I implement um, all the cases. Simple as that. And then I can use that to do something like returning the text value of the enum. So it will end up looking like this where now I can save our name or enum name equals inner switch. And this will give me now the thing. However, I can also technically do this, uh, enum name two equals tier switch, and then implement the cases. So I can say something like this, and then return that. And this has the exact same effect. Now I just don't have to create a method to do that. So two ways to do switch. Obviously, this is a switch statement. This is a switch expression. They work differently to many degrees, but they can be used for the same purpose. So what's the right approach? I mean, less code here. So I guess let's go with that. But again, this is up to you. There's, there's many things that are personal preference and they can cause friction in teams because people might have strong feelings about them. And it actually doesn't end there. If I go ahead and I extract that to an enum, uh, methods or approaches, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see a different example. Let's say down here I have an interface and I call that iTest. And then I also have um, an abstract class. So abstract class called base test or test base, it doesn't matter. And I want to have an implementation of 
them. So I'm going to call that class test. Let's say I want to have a method in the abstract class that prints something. So I'm going to say public void um, print, some, some name, and then console.writeline hello from base test. Simple enough. And if I wanted to just print that, I would go here and I would say base test. And then if I create up here a base test equals new test, I can access the print method and I can use it to print to the console. And if I do that, sure enough, you can see uh, the printed thing over here. Now, I could also copy that method, stick it in the interface and implement the interface. And if I change that to I tier now, same thing, because since uh, C sharp eight, methods can have implementations. So what's the right approach? Which one are you going to use? There's many things that will drive that decision. I don't want you to just focus on this simple example and think that I'm confusing interfaces with abstract classes. They have different functionalities, but they share a lot of common things. And this is another thing in the whole feature creep. C Sharp can do so much, and it's amazing that it's being kept updated over and over again with new and exciting features. But if other things are not being ditched to be recognized as the old way of doing things and stop being used, then what's the right approach? You can see C Sharp 7 written and C Sharp 10 written. And if you utilize all the features in 10, these two languages look completely different. Now, I'm thankful for the features, but I don't necessarily like the bloat. I agree with the concerns of many people. And especially as tutorials never really get updated except for the Microsoft ones or like some very good ones in Pluralsight, people who get in, they choose the outdated way of doing things. We learn C Sharp, come in, go to work, and they will just use the old way of doing things. And they will be judged for not knowing the new and fancy way of doing things. And they will get confused, frustrated, and might go with a different language. So how can we solve this? Well, since we have to maintain backwards compatibility with the old way of doing things, you really can't unless you do something like what Rust does. So Rust does maintain the backwards compatibility but it also has this concept of additions and you can opt in into a mechanism where you say eagerly that, yeah, I want to use the new fancy way and that's the standard. The old one, I don't want support for it. Please break my code if that happens. Um, and I think they also have a migrator. I'm only now starting looking into Rust and that's one of the things that actually really draw my attention and that's why I'm making this video uh, because it's very smart on how they manage their uh, versioning. And the other thing is that C Sharp is very open. It's not really opinionated at all if you think about it. Some things in the framework is, but the language itself isn't, as opposed to Go, who even dictates where you put your Kelly braces. So I think that as C Sharp ages, it would be good if the C Sharp team started looking into how we can achieve something like what Rust does, where you can opt in a structure where teams just say, okay, this is not how we want to write code anymore. This is how we're going to go about it. Sure, you can have uh, source analyzers to enforce those policies on your own, but that's specific to the team. Really, we want the similar type of version of standard across the board just to make transition from one team to another on one project to another more smooth. Now, the main reason why I made this video is to actually ask you what you think in this subject. Please leave a comment down below. Many of you I know have been using C Sharp for years, and I'd like to know what are your thoughts looking in the past and looking at now how you write C Sharp, what's changed, what's in your mind, how do you think that C Sharp will continue being bleeding edge without removing some of the features? Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making the videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.